So a bunch of people on Twitter were freaking out because Bernie's proposing this tax on vested shares that you haven't actually cashed in yet. Okay. And tech people were like, oh, okay, there goes the startup scene. Like, well, you know, if you're going to so tax people crazy. on vested shares that they haven't actually received the prop, like, th this company's not liquid. And so but there are some nuances, like it's written here. It's tax on non-qualified stock options of at least 100,000. You know, if you have over 100,000 in stock uh, stock options that are vested and you're an employee who's making at least 130K. So it's not everybody, and it's not all types of What's things. So it's not RSUs. It's ISOs, I believe. Okay, so I'm not an expert in this stuff at all. I'm not an expert in politics. Me I neither. know what I believe, but I don't know the technical details. So we'll let's agree to talk out of our ass for so two minutes. I'm not going to talk about that, actually. But here's what I am going to talk about is starting a company and how it worked with us. And this will – a lot because I do know that a lot of people think, like, oh, the rich are doing this. They don't understand things. So when we started The Hustle, I saved up $25,000 to start it. With that twenty five thousand dollars, I made sixty grand in profit in six weeks, which is pretty good. And the first year in business was roughly three hundred eighty thousand dollars in revenue, and most of it was profit because I paid myself. Uh, we were in, I think we were an LLC. I withdrew two thousand dollars a month in salary, salary, um, and that's how I paid my bills. My rent was cheap, very cheap, hundreds of th hundreds of dollars a month, um, and I lived off twelve hundred dollars um, beyond that. Beyond that, I was very, I lived very, very, very frugally. Um, and then we decided to raise a little bit of money. I raised, I think, $300,000 from people at a $3.5 million valuation. And you had to change from being an LLC at this point, right? Yep. Changed to, to become uh, an S Corp, I think. It was an S Corp? Probably a C Corp. I don't remember. I, see, this is, I'm not an expert in this. Yeah. Um, you want to be a C Corp if you're going to take investment. That's just like, if you don't have to study all the differences between them, but if you're going to take. Like traditional investment, they're going to want you to be a C corp. So we converted. It cost five grand to do that. At this point, we probably had half a million dollars in the mm, three hundred thousand dollars in the bank account. I don't. I don't remember. It's between three hundred and five hundred thousand by the end of our first year, uh, and we raised money at a three and a half million dollar valuation. And then once we started doing stock options and stuff like that, we signed up to Carta, and they gave us a uh, what's it called a four hundred nine a. Yep. Where we got um, so that four nine a just values your company at some number. So yeah. you guys had revenue, so they probably took some standard multiple yeah, of so revenue. Yeah, so they valued us, and you want it to be low at this stage. Yeah, so they valued us in the millions of dollars of range. I, I don't remember. It could have been three and a half. It could have been six. I don't right. remember the number. Whenever these types of businesses are, right. that's what they value. And you want us. it to be low because that's what your share price is. Get, that's what your stock options are going to be if you're an employee. Uh, you want to get in at the sort of low valuation. So when it sells at a high valuation, you get this sort of uh, increase in value. But if they, if the four hundred nine a comes back high, then um, you're not going to get you know as much of a lift on your share price. And so at this point, our four hundred nine a is many tens of millions. Um, which is nice. That's cool. We have a valuable business. Um, but when we started, it was single digit millions, which was still a lot. I was 24 at the time. I, I said I started with $25,000 and I was taking $2,000 a month. I was not saving any money. Right. Okay. Um, I'm not complaining because it worked out. But so on paper, I was a millionaire, multiple millionaire. If I had to pay, um, I think, thir I forget what this... I don't want to like act like I know what I'm talking about. I, let's say if I if I had to pay 20% in taxes on that multiple millions of dollars, yeah, you wouldn't have had. The I money. literally wouldn't have had any money to do it. Right. Even if I wanted to withdraw money from our business account, I would have had to lay people off. Or right. I, I, I like so when people say so, certain people are hoarding money or something like that, a lot of times it's not true. Right. And I have a lot of founder friends that have businesses that are on paper worth hundreds of millions of dollars. Right. And they have tens of thousands of dollars saved. That's In the it. bank account, yeah. So They're not liquid. Yeah, I think people need to... And this also happens if you're an employee. Um, you leave a company, you usually have what they call an exercise window, which might be 30 days, 60 days, 90 days. Um, I think the I think the normal about is 90, 90 days. Um, so that gives you three months to come up with the money to buy your options, or you lose them. Yeah. And a lot of people don't have that money because, like, you know, they they leave one company, it's a startup, and now their shares are worth 80 grand or 180 grand, and they need to go. They want to go do a different job, and um, now they need to come up with 80 or 180 grand to buy out their options. That's not still a guarantee that that money's coming back. And often people don't have that money sitting in the bank, so they'll forfeit their options, which is a, a true bummer. Some companies are being cool about it. Pinterest, uh, a couple others I don't remember, maybe Stripe. 
they increased their exercise window to seven years or six years. That's crazy. So they're like, look, cool. we know this practice is a little bit crazy. Uh, it's hard to come up with that cash. And you worked here. You earned your shares. So we're not going to try to take those back. You have the longer window because we might be private for longer, which is kind of a cool trend. So More my w company should do that. My W-2 income. So at this point, I make money in eight or ten different ways. I got loads of things that just it just has added up over time. And that's great. And I still pay myself a salary. I pay myself... Um, not that much. No, I'm not the highest paid person here. Yeah. And I, um, but my W two salary. I, we're gonna be four years old. Uh, I've been working on this as a project since 2014. We're gonna be four years old as officially in April. I, uh, oh, next month. I, uh, my W two salary in year one, I think was twenty four thousand dollars. Year two, maybe thirty six, and then year three, then I started go going higher. Right, because the business was established yeah. at that point. Yeah. But my W two income historically has been low right quite low and so when i saw this and i saw people getting mad at rich people i'm like i bet people thought i was rich but i wasn't <laughs> you know what i mean yeah and you wouldn't have qualified for this because it says you have to be making at least 130k but uh like but if i had to pay 30 years tax on my stock now it would be painful fucking hard yeah you'd be in a really tough spot so you know, Bernie, I like Bernie, but this is a little bit crazy. This will really screw up uh, the way the startup ecosystem works, but it can also adapt. I'm they not even going to take a stand if I think it's crazy or not. I just am giving a perspective of my business. And right. I bet, and, and I think I, I now, I think I have a lot more cash than even most people who have companies that are huge. What's your biggest regret in the way you set up or organized or structured the company? I wish I wouldn't have raised money and I would have just owned it all. And why is that? Because I would be greedier and richer. You, um, you didn't end up needing that capital. It's hard to say because it worked. It worked. Um, if I wanted to start fresh again, I would have been able to do it. I can start now. What about advice? A lot of people think, oh, this person's so successful, right? You raise money from a bunch of cool, smart, successful people, either in media or not in media. Yeah, so that was helpful. Was that truly – like, so did you get your sort of values worth on the advice component? Yes. Because I don't, I'm not sure that – that typically plays out that way, but I Fuck think you yeah, did. it works. Okay, so look, our network is so fucking powerful. Me and you, our network is so powerful. I have, I think, thirty-five investors ranging from Tim Ferriss, the founders of Nerd Wallet, which is, who knows what that's worth, billions of dollars. Um, um, the founder of the Chive, founders of Bleacher Report. Um, who else? Um, j just look it up. A lot of people, and I text them. I just text right. them. I'll say. You get a lot out of them, and I'll tell you two things that you do that gets a lot. First, your investor updates, which you send. You used to I, send more frequently. Now How? I send them quarterly, but before, I for monthly, right? 36 months, I send them every single month. Every single month, and the, it was so well organized. It was basically like, um, hey, here's all the key metrics. You don't beat around the bush. It's like, this is how much cash we got in the bank. This is how much we made this month. This is how much the email list grew. This is how much our open rate was. Boom. That's number one. Number two, and how, what was your second sort of so section? I would, I, I, the way that I set it up, I was like, oh, numbers. I go, just here's the numbers. There's no interpretation. Just, right. What it all is. right, let's get into it. Numbers. Boom. Okay, then I go, uh, and then I do things that are going well. Things are not going well. I need your Ask. help. Yeah. Yes or no. Yeah. It was great. And um, you sent that to – so you did the work to keep them engaged and mm -hmm. stay top of mind. Do not under, under underestimate this if you're doing your business. If there's people who are willing to help you out, you got to find a way to stay top of mind um, and, and – Part of it is you you share frequent updates, and there's a very good sign if you're an investor, if you're one of your companies, stop sending their updates for a bit. Uh, that company is about to die, or they're on their way to dying, and they go into a shell. And Paul Graham has this great post, which is just like, um, as an investor, when you see that, you know it's time to go check in. And as a founder, ironically, that's when you need the help the most. Yep. So don't go quiet when you need the help the most. That's when you need to be talking and asking, and uh, maybe you actually won't die if you if you could keep that going. What other mistakes have we made? Um, so I always regretted the um, – I think that the, the normal way that people give out equity is a little too founder greedy. Um, so I wish I had given more equity to my team. Um, and so, like, you know, basically I wish I had just negotiated it better between what do I get, what do the investors get, and what does my team get. I think it was imbalanced. I think some of what the investors got, the team should have got. Some of what I had, I sh the team should have got. Uh, because really, like the people who are there as person four, five, six, really they're taking just as much risk as you are in in a way. 
Um, like they were there when it wasn't obvious that this was going to work. And so for the all stars, I wish I had given more. And next time, my next company, I'll do just that. I will do you, make sure the I, core have... four, core five people. I'll make sure it's not like like typically in a company. How big would the pool be? So I, I don't know exactly what the pool will be, but let's say let's go what what's typical. So typical company, two co-founders, you start 50 50. You're going to raise some money. They might end up taking 25 to 30 percent of the company, um, depending on how it goes. Let's call it 25 percent. And so, you know, as the founders, you, you've diluted down, you're at, I don't know, my math's bad, but let's say you're both at, uh, what is that, 30-something, 30 35% each now. And, um, and so, you, you know, that's where you're at. And then your team, the option pool, they typically say is like 10 to 15% is your sort of option pool. Yeah. So the first few employees might have like, you know, the key person might get like 1% to 3%. And then everybody else is below that, is below 1% essentially. And I just think that's like a pretty hard skew. So I would try to get multiple people in the sort of 1% to, one to 4% range. Uh, I would try to have like my core, my core team all be in the over 1% range for sure. And whether that means I take the haircut or investors take the haircut, that's what I would do if it's a tech company. I think this is very idea. different if you're not a high growth tech company. Would if you you're start a, it in San Francisco again though? I'd start it wherever I live. And so if I'm, if I wanted to live here, yeah, I'd start it here. Um, if I wanted to live somewhere else, I'd start it somewhere else. Now you can start it definitely anywhere. So it's just about your preferences. I, if I was going to start again, another thing that I would do is I would go and get a job somewhere and just make, like when I started, I hadn't, I didn't, I was always self-employed mostly. Um, I wish I would have worked somewhere maybe for a little while. Before you did it? Or you mean as a, do something as a side hustle? Before. Oh, you just get the experience. Yeah, I think it would have been nice. And to save money. That's interesting. I wouldn't have thought you'd say that. Uh, I think it would be helpful um, to to understand how things work. I think if you did it for three months, you'd be like, okay, I'm done. <laughs> it would have been nice I got to it. stack some <laughs> money away. Yeah, that's fair. But uh, hey, it all.